everybody. So I'm on my way to the Orlando Crossing the Finish Line Rally with Michael Reagan and Newt Gingrich. Yay! Yay! With my mom. That's my mom. Yes. And Newt Gingrich is going to be the next president. Yay! And I'm going to get to meet him, possibly. Before he's president. Yeah, so maybe it's not as cool. But anyway, I'm excited. I don't know why I said it that way, but I'm excited. And mostly I'm excited because I want to meet Michael Reagan because I have a thing for President Reagan. Yeah, she does. I think President Reagan was like the hottest president that ever lived. Even though Michael Reagan is his stepson, or no. Adopted, adopted son. son. But he still lived in the same house with Reagan. A little bit. So anyway, this is getting weird. newscaster and I'm totally like photobombing them. I'm trying to get out of their way but I'm probably still in their shot. And Bill McCollum is here and he's going to cut out and introduce the next speaker. So welcome, Attorney General Bill McCollum. Thank you all. Thank you for everything. Thank you for being here. Good evening all. Good evening all. And most importantly, most importantly, Newt Gingrich is going to be our nominee come this summer when we go to the That's right. And more important than that, he's going to be the next President of the United States. Let me tell you, I'm going to bring somebody out here in a second, but I've got to say this to you. This is the last campaign stop for Newt Gingrich. I've been privileged to be as co-chairman, chairman in Florida. And I want you to know that the reason I'm so strongly supportive of Newt Gingrich is because I know the man. I've known him for a long time. We were elected together, almost. He was two years ahead of me, but I came with Ronald Reagan in 1980. I served in the leadership with him before we took the majority in 1994. I know that he created the Conservative Opportunity Society, and we were walking in the wilderness in those days. It had been 40 years before, more than 40 years before 1994, that we'd had a majority of the U.S. House. Without Newt Gingrich, there would have been no majority in 1994. Without, without, without Newt... Without Newt, there would have been no contract with America. Without Newt, there would have been no welfare reform. Without Newt, there would have been no balanced budget in those years. We need, we need Newt Gingrich's knowledge, his leadership skills, and we need his vision above all. He will make a great president of the United States. He will be somebody who can debate Obama in the fall with sharp contrast. And we know that difference. But to give him the formal introduction that he deserves tonight, because we serve so much, I served so much in the Reagan years, and he did too, I have a special friend and a special treat for you. Somebody who campaigned very hard for me down here in Florida in the last election. Somebody I think all of you know who exemplifies his dad so, so well with a national radio talk show. I want to give you now Michael Reagan. Come on. I've been out and spent a day out campaigning. I think, my gosh, it's like riding a bike. <laughs> it's really been a great day. Gosh, you, you, you know, my, my dad always started off his speeches with, you know, kind of like, you know, telling the latest joke he heard. And he said, Do you hear the one about the guy walked into the, into the bar, sat down at the bar, and a robot bartender comes over? <coughs> says, Guy, what do you have? 
guy says, I'll have a martini. Robot brings him the greatest martini he's ever had. And he says, the guy, what's your IQ? The guy says, 186. Robot starts talking about Steve Jobs, Stephen Hawkins, the moon, the stars. The guy says, this is unbelievable. So he gets up and he leaves. He gets to the door. He says, ah, he says, you know, I think I'll go back up another one. He sits down. Robot comes over and says, what do you have? The guy says, I'll have a martini. Robot brings him another great martini. He says, what's your IQ? The guy says, 100. <laughs> Robot starts talking about Budweiser, John Deere tractors, NASCAR. Hey, that's cool. Finishes that martini, gets up to go, and says, no, one more time. Sits down. Robot says, what do you have now? He says, I'll have a martini. Robot brings him another great martini. He says, what's your IQ? Guy says, uh, 50. <laughs> Robot leans in real close to him and says, you guys still happy about that vote for Obama? <laughs> and I support Newt Gingrich because I believe he's the man that will fight to make sure we retain those freedoms and get the freedoms that we in fact have lost over the past three years. And we have to enjoy this battle. You see, I think of the other side. Those, those liberals in, in Washington. I think of them as termites. I mean, if you, if you think of termites, what do they do? They eat away at the foundation of your house each and every day, don't they? Well, that's what they do back in Washington, the liberals. They eat away at the foundation of this nation, of this country. And the only way to stop them is to tempt them. But you can't do it every two years or four years. You've got to be working at it every single day of your life because they're working every single day of their life to take those freedoms away and eat away at the foundation of this country. So I'm here to challenge you to something. Everybody always talks about Ronald Reagan. We want him back. I'd love to have him back. Trust me, Nancy would love to have her husband back. If you wake up in the morning, you want to be free. You wake up in the morning, you want that shining city on a hill again. Amen. You don't have to look for Ronald Reagan. He's living inside of you, each and every one of you. Be happy that we had him during our lifetimes. But the challenge is, I don't want you to go home from here tonight and say, I was at this event in Orlando, Florida on January 30th. Of 2012, I heard Mike Reagan and Bill McCollum and, and the mayor and, and Newt Gingrich, Calista Gingrich come out and talk. And then I went home and did nothing. I'm going to challenge you. I want you all to start your own, if you will, letter that you're going to write to put into your own time capsule. To tell your families, your children, your great-grandchildren, what you're doing today to ensure their freedoms for tomorrow. Do what Ronald Reagan did. People quote Ronald Reagan. You want to be like Ronald Reagan? Think about those who are going to live on the 300th anniversary of this country. Are they going to enjoy the freedoms then that you have now? Because if you don't make the right decision, they certainly won't. Chris and I are truly honored to be here. We had a tremendous uh, day all day today. And we went from Jacksonville over to Pensacola, then to Tampa, then down to Fort Myer. Now here we are. Uh, and, and everywhere we went, we had great crowds and great enthusiasm. And I want you to know that I am committed on the very first day I am president to issue an executive order repealing every aspect of Obama's anti-religious bias. Let me also say that on the very first day, there will be a series of executive orders. The very first one will abolish all of the White House czars yeah. as of that moment. Yeah. In addition, on the very first day, we will issue an executive order requiring the State Department to open an embassy in Jerusalem that day. Yeah. 
we are faced with, I think, the most important election of our lifetime. I think a re-elected Barack Obama would be a nightmare in terms of the radical values. I want to introduce my daughter, Jackie Cushman, is right over here in the corner. She writes a weekly column, and I thought a couple of months ago she captured it perfectly. She said, we were told we were voting for change you could believe in, and we discovered we'd voted for somebody who wanted to change what we believe. And I thought that captured pretty darn well. that we can have an American century if the American people are in charge and the establishment is put back in its right place, but we will not have an American century if the establishment continues to preside over the decay where they take care of themselves, but the country fades as a result of their policies. That's how clear this race is. your help. You got it. We, got it. we are going to win a decisive victory tomorrow with your help. Six we're going to go on and win across the whole country. And with your help, starting in Tampa, we're going to run a general election campaign that is open. Not Well, I'm running for the Republican nomination. We're going to run an American yeah. campaign this fall. If you prefer jobs and paychecks to unemployment and food stamps, come join us. If you prefer American energy to bowing to a Saudi king, come join us. If you believe in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Federalist Papers, and you do not believe in the radicalism of Saul Alinsky and Barack Obama, come join us. If you believe in the right to worship God without government interfering, come join us. whose father served for 27 years in the infantry. We're going to say the American people. If you agree that the world is dangerous and the best way to safeguard our children and grandchildren is to be the strongest, most effective country in the world, come join us. Excuse me. 